I believe there's been a dramatic decline in listening skills. People just don't listen today as well as they used to. We've almost conditioned ourselves not to be good listeners. And, and there are many reasons why this is the case. Number one, it's because we don't want to. It really comes down to a matter of desire. I remember a long time ago hearing this story about a fellow who was in desperate need of help. And so he called his best friend and he said, listen, I need a thousand dollars. And his friend said, excuse me. And he said, I need a thousand dollars. And he said, I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you. And so his friend said even louder, I need a thousand dollars. And he said, well, we must have a bad connection because I can't hear you. And about that time, the operator came on the phone and said, sir, I can hear the man clearly. And he said, well, then you give him the thousand dollars. <laughs> Sometimes our hearing problems stem from, from us. We just don't want to be good listeners. And last week, we took the time to consider the cause of hearing problems. We said, don't listen to the competing voice of family. God wants to be number one. Don't listen to the competing voice of fears. Don't be dominated. Don't allow fears to dominate your life. We said, don't listen to the competing voice of financing, finances. Making money is fine. That's great. Make, make a lot of money. But don't let that become your primary focus. We said don't listen to the competing voice of fun. I want to have as much fun as anybody. And, and I believe that God wants you to enjoy life, but it's still important to remember your priorities. Keep your priorities straight. Don't listen to the competing voice of sin because sin wants nothing more than for you to be defeated. Don't listen to the com competing voice of Satan because Satan wants nothing more than to discourage you and convince you to give up and to quit. Don't listen to the competing voice of self because the greatest deception in so many cases that you will ever experience is self-deception. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. Listen to the Son of God. Listen to the Spirit of God and listen to the saints of God as they reflect the message of the Bible. This morning, we want to consider the cure of hearing problems. We talked about the cause. Now we want to talk about the cure. We addressed why we have hearing problems. And so today we want to talk about how we solve hearing problems. It's normal to evaluate the speaker after a service. But I wonder, how often do we evaluate the listener? Have you ever heard the expression that after worship on Sunday morning, we, we all went out to lunch and we had the preacher for lunch? Have you ever heard that expression? <laughs> do you know what that means? He used the wrong word. He used improper grammar. He took that verse out of context. It was the wrong citation. He said the wrong person's name. He didn't pronounce it properly. That's what you call having the preacher for lunch. What would it look like if we had the member for lunch or the members? I mean, have you ever asked yourself, how well did I listen today? How much can I remember? Which part of that lesson really convicted me, and I know it's going to be hard to apply that message in my life. Imagine if you sat around with your brothers and sisters in Christ, and you evaluated how well you listened and how much you benefited from the lesson. Look at Luke chapter 8 as we get started this morning. In verse 18, Luke chapter 8 and verse 18, Jesus said, Therefore, take care how you listen. I'm, I promise you, if you don't take care how you listen when you come to church, you're going to have a hearing problem. 
It takes effort. You need to be proactive. And I so appreciate those members of the body of Christ who actually start thinking about these kinds of things on Saturday night so that they may be prepared on the Lord's day to listen. Jesus said, therefore, take care how you listen for whoever has to him shall more be given and whoever does not have even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him. I want to suggest, first of all, as we get started this morning, that you should hear openly. You need to hear openly. Look at Psalm chapter 119 and verse 105. Psalm, Psalm 119 verse 105. This is an easy one to remember because we sing a song that comes right from this passage. It's verbatim from this passage. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Such a beautiful poetic passage from God's Word. And this passage, what I want you to understand, implies openness to God's Word, doesn't it? If it is a lamp and a light, then certainly you are open to its teachings. It is going to guide your way in every way. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verses 13 through 16. Matthew chapter 13, verses 13 through 16. Jesus said, therefore, I speak to them in parables, because while seeing, they do not see. And while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. Do you know that that Jesus teaches us in this passage that you can come to church every single time and not get anything out of what's said? I believe that's what he's saying right here in this verse. In verse 14, he says, And in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, you keep on hearing, but you will not understand. And you keep on seeing, but you will not perceive. Verse 15, for the heart of this people has become dull. And with their ears, they scarcely hear. And they've closed their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return. And I should heal them. God wants to heal, but he won't heal unless you return. And you can't return unless you you see and you hear and you open up your heart to what God's word is teaching. And then verse 16, he says, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. I want you to understand that when, when you read this passage, this was a Jewish problem. But more than a Jewish problem, if we're going to be honest, this this is an American problem. How many people all over the world could be defined by what Jesus says right here? People who have hearing problems. But I want you to know in the context, this was absolutely a Jewish problem. And as a result of it, they missed the Messiah. How tragic. They missed the Son of God, God in the flesh, the one who came to redeem them from their sins. And because of hard-heartedness, because of vision problems and and hearing problems, they missed Jesus. When you think you know everything, you can't learn anything. Do you understand that? Michael and I were talking about that this past week on the golf course. The the beauty of the Church of Christ is that we humbly submit to the Word of God. But when you get to the point as a member of the church that you've got it all right, you're not going to learn anymore. You can't. When you think you know everything, you can't learn anything. And I so appreciate Michael's class, and, and I used these words, and he used both of them in his class. It was probably from our conversation on the golf course. But arrogance is blinding. We need to remember That arrogance is blinding. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 11, the Bible says these were more noble-minded than those who were in Thessalonica. For they searched the scriptures daily to see whether the things that were said were so. Can't you see openness in their hearing of the word of God in those passages? 
that they were so open to what was said that they were evaluating it on a daily basis. And so number one, you should hear openly. That, that's part of the cure to hearing problems. And number two, you should hear discerningly. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through, through 20. Jesus said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You know why we have hearing problems? Because there are false prophets out there. And you need to be discerning when you listen so that you can overcome the challenges that they present. They look good. They're convincing. But he says here, they're only wearing sheep's clothing, but inside they're ravenous wolves. Why do we have to be discerning? Because verse 16 says, you will know them by their fruits. You're not going to know them by what they say, but by what they do. And then he says, grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, you will know them by their fruits. We need to listen discerningly. You can't go along with everything that comes along. Look at this admonition that Paul gives the church in Ephesus in chapter 4 and verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. Paul says, as a result, we are no longer to be children. It's easy to deceive children. There's an expectation within the Christian faith that you grow, that you mature. And so he says here, you're no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You need to hear discerningly. If you stand for nothing, you'll likely fall for anything. Let me see if I can illustrate what it means to hear discerningly. I, I met a fellow on Friday at LA Fitness playing basketball. I, ironically, his name was Christian. And actually, Joseph Suarez began visiting with him before I did, and he's over there having a conversation with this kid, and he's smiling at me, and every time the kid looks away, he goes, and I'm like, what, what, what's going on? Like, what? So after he walked away, Joseph comes over to me, and he says, hey, this guy's hot. You, you can talk to this guy about the Bible. He's interested. And, and boy, was he. We, we had a good conversation, but at one point, in between games, he walked up to me, and he said, God told me to leave my phone at the other club I worked out at. I, I left it there because God told me to leave it there. And I said to him, why did he tell you that? He actually had a pretty good answer. He said, because I didn't need it. And then he said, and God told me to leave my wallet at the other club where I worked out. And I said, same thing. Why did he tell you that? And he said, because I didn't need it. He was trying to tell me to depend on him and to trust him. Now, you know, when he told me all that, I thought, this guy's crazy. <laughs> the, the elevator doesn't go all the way to the top, if you know what I mean. You, you have to listen discer discerningly. Yes, you have to listen openly. You have to be open. But you also have to be discerning. Balance is required here. If we're going to solve hearing problems, we've, we need to strike a balance between being open and being discerning. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10, we're in the context here of the nine spiritual gifts that Paul records that the church there in Corinth was given. And in verse 10 he says... And to another, the effecting of miracles, and to another, prophecy, 
and to another the distinguishing of spirits. And that's the phrase I want us to, to spend a little time on. To another various kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues. What I want you to understand is that where it says the, the, dis, dis, the distinguishing of spirits, the King James Version actually uses the word discerning. Discerning the spirits. And if it was important enough in the first century to be granted extraordinary ability, it's certainly important enough in the 21st century to exercise ordinary ability. We need to hear discerningly. Look at 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Yes, be open, but be discerning. He says, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. It's important to be open and to be discerning. You know why? Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And so just because somebody says God told them something does not mean necessarily that you should believe it. Put the spirit to the test. You should hear openly. You should hear absolutely and in every way discerningly. And you should hear, lastly, believingly. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful passage and such a powerful message to boot. He says, and for this reason, we also constantly thank God. Why is Paul re representing the apostles thanking God. He's not thanking God because they heard the word. He's thanking God because they responded to the word. Because they obeyed the word. And so he says, for this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you receive from us the word of God's message, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for, but for what it really is, the word of God. Now look which also performs its work in you who believe. If we're going to cure hearing problems, we're going to have to hear believingly. There's an unmistakable correlation between belief and obedience. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, the Hebrews writer said, Therefore, let us fear lest. There is a time to be afraid. Now, we know the Bible teaches in 1 John that perfect love casts out fear. I believe that. But, but there is a time to be afraid. And here, the Hebrews writer says, Therefore, let us fear lest while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you should seem to have come short of it. God holds a promise out there for us. It's eternal rest. It's, it's heaven. And it can be ours. But it's also possible that it might not be ours. And so in that regard, there should be some fear. Verse 2, for indeed, we have had good news preached to us just as they also, but the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. You see, they had a hearing problem. They, they didn't hear believingly. Meaning that not only did they hear it and understand it, but that they applied it. And verse 3 says, For we who have believed enter that rest, just as he said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although... His works were finished from the foundation of the world. Martin Luther said, A religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, and suffers nothing is worth nothing. I love 
number 714 in our songbook, Trust and Obey. And, and I just want to I want to read these words very quickly because I think it illustrates this point so well. And that's what a good song does that we select to sing in church. It, it reinforces what God's word says. And, and here the songwriter said, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do, while we do his good will, he abides with us still and all who will trust and obey. Verse 5, then in fellowship suite, we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says, we will do. We will do. Where he sends, we will go. Never fear. Only trust and obey. And you don't have to fear if you do and you go. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I want to ask a question. Just think about this. If, if you heard one sermon every single week for 52 weeks, and you did that for 50 years of your life, we have any good math students? That's 2,600 sermons. Now just imagine if you heard two. If you heard two sermons every Sunday for 52 weeks, for 50 years. That's a lot of sermons. That's 5,200 sermons. I just want to ask you, what good are all of those lessons doing you? Are you living those lessons? Saving faith is responsive. It reacts to the word of God. Look at James Chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. In James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. James says, but prove yourselves doers of the word. And not merely hearers who delude themselves. So you got you to be a doer. It's not enough just to come and listen to the lesson. You can't just be a hearer. That represents someone with hearing problems. And not only that, he mentions this word delusion. There it is again, self-deception. Verse 23, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he's looked at himself and gone away, he's immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man shall be blessed in what he does. Consider the cause. That's what we did last week. Today, consider the cure. The next time, we want to consider the consequence of hearing problems. But let me remind you to hear openly, to hear discerningly, to hear believingly. And maybe, maybe it's best to finish where we started today, listening to the voice of our Lord. Look at Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. In Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 through 22, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Do you believe that Jesus is right outside your door knocking? That he is desperate to have a relationship with you? Because that's what he says. He's standing outside your door in a figurative way. But, but you know what this passage doesn't say? It doesn't say that he's going he's gonna to come in unwelcomed. It, it doesn't say that he's going to break the door down, that he's going to storm in. L look at what Jesus says. He says, if anyone hears my voice, you have to hear. And then you have to act. You've got to do something. He says, and opens the door. Jesus is desperately standing outside your door, and he wants to come in, but you have to hear him, and you have to open the door, and he says, I will come into him, and I will dine with him, and he with me. That's amazing to think about Jesus coming into your life 
into your home and dining with you. He says, he who overcomes, I will grant him to sit down with me on my throne and as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And then verse 22. This is the lesson right here. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Maybe someone has heard in a significant way this morning and is responsive to the invitation that Jesus himself gives. You need to believe that he's God's son. You need to repent of your sins. You need to confess Christ. You need to be buried with him in baptism. That's really what it means to open up the door. Now, is that in Revelation chapter 3? Not in so many words, but it's all throughout the New Testament. And if you are a child of God and you've had Jesus dying with you and you've asked him to leave because of the way you're living, but you know that your life is not the same without him and you want him to come back in, you see, that's a great thing about God. You, you can actually kick him out of your life. He's still going to be standing at the door knocking. But you have to do what he asks. You need to make confession. You need to repent. And he will forgive. If you have a need, whatever it is, won't you let it be known as together we stand and sing.